Hi hey everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by Regular Dude and part number six of the Tamiya 135th scale M2A2 Bradley. In the last video, I pretty much finished all of the construction with the exception of the parts that I had to leave off to paint the lower parts here. So, um... Just to kind of recap, I have not put on any of the tools, uh, removable items such as ammo boxes, stuff like that. But not put on the side skirts. And I have not put on this part right here, which I have no idea what it is. It's just painted black. But uh, I'm ready to start moving along on this. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to... Um, yeah. Actually, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing a little bit of uh, not too heavy weathering underneath here because, um, first of all, you're not going to see it. Second of all, I am making a peacetime vehicle, road use, not a whole lot of... Uh, filth and dirt on it. It's just going to be a lot of dust and stuff. So I think what I will do first is uh, get out some actually what I need to do first is I need to paint these tracks. They've been primed but they have not been painted. So that's what I'm going to do first. So let me get everything ready and uh, I will do that. Alrighty then. The first color I'm going to do is I'm going to use this MIG um, Rust Tracks, and it's basically just a brown color, um, kind of a dark brown, rusty, dark rust color, but that's just going to be the basis of the metal parts of the tracks. I'm not going for a real rusty look, I'm just using this as a base. So it's all shaken up good. I've used it on one other kit and uh, I liked it. So let's do it again. So let me, I'm going to be using my um, Iwata HPM2. So let me get this ready. And let us begin. And this is what they look like painted. Um, so all I have to do is once this let this dry a little bit is I just have to paint these track pads with the black rubber color. And uh, yeah, I'll be ready to move on. All right, next up, I'm gonna work on some pin wash here. And for this, I'm using dark green gray panel line wash by Ammo by MIG, which is a MIG-1608 using my favorite wash brush. Now I didn't put a clear coat on here, like a gloss like I normally do, because especially under here, I'm not really concerned about it. And really, it's not necessary. So I'm just gonna put that in there like that. And just work my way around the details. On the whole thing. And then um, I can come back. You know because there's a little bit of Tide looking stuff right going on right there. I can come back and take care of that. Now these. You know they should be painted black. But I'm putting this wash on here. And it's going to be underneath these. This isn't even necessary because it's going to be underneath the skirts. So, yeah, call me lazy, I don't care. But, I'm just going to work my right way around the whole lower hull here. This will be the first part of the, uh, the weathering I want to do. And I'll show you how I clean it up. 
neaten it up around the edges when I come back. So I'm just gonna work on this and uh, come back. So next I'm taking some clean thinner and I'm just wiped most of it off, but then I'm using it to blend these tide marks out. Now these tide marks wouldn't be quite as bad as it if, if I would have glossed it, but I didn't want to gloss it. I just wanted to try it like this for a change. And um, it's working pretty good. So like that. And then as it dries, as the thinner dries, it'll look all properly blended and just a little splotchy, which is something that I like because it just adds to the weathering aspect of it. Alright, so I'm going to continue on around on the other side. Got the wheels done, and I'll be doing the same thing with those. Except with those, I'm probably going to use just a Q-tip and just kind of hit the high points like that. Okay, so with that, uh, with all the pin wash done and dry, I am now using model color, Vallejo model color khaki and this brush. What I'm doing is I'm getting just a little bit on the brush and then I'm carefully, hopefully this will work, I've done it a long time, dry brushing the high details. Now this is an old school method and plenty of people frown on it, but you know what? It is effective for doing for doing highlight stuff and also for light fading. And that's what I'm trying to achieve here. All this is going to be just totally underneath and not visible, but I do want the uh, detail to show up a little bit, and it's good practice for later on in the model. So it's just a matter of lightly hitting the highlights and then. lightening the flat surfaces. It's kind of hard to tell with this hard hard lighting I've got going on here, harsh lighting, but it is lightening it a little bit and uh, it'll achieve what I'm going for. This is really old school. Old model, old school methods. Just like that. Then, once I'm done with the hull, then I can move on to the wheels. And I'll demonstrate here on this, uh, this here uh, idler. I'm basically just doing the same thing, hitting the highlights. And what that's going to do is give these parts a little more depth. It's a really easy method to do once you get the hang of it. And it's quite simple. So you can see the difference there between the one that's been dry brushed and wasn't ha the one that hasn't. The contrast between the pin wash and the dry brushed highlights really helps to uh, make these things a little more dimensional looking. The trick is though to get the, the uh, most of the paint off of the brush. You want it almost dry. It's better to have too little than too much because it's easier to add than to subtract. Okay, that's all there is to it. Just like that. And you know what? I'm digging it. Sometimes these old school methods are still viable used in conjunction with more modern stuff.
Okay, this wheel's gonna spin, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna lightly hit the inside here. Now remember, I'm going for a peacetime garrison type vehicle. I'm not going for something that's getting, you know, a lot of uh, wear and tear. This is Cold War stuff. And I, I realize that they get dirty just like everything else, but I'm going for something that's a little more um, getting ready to go to the field as opposed to just coming back. Okay, so again, there's what you get right there. Looks good. Color choice is also somewhat important because you don't want to go with something that's too bright. Like uh, there, um, Vallejo makes a buff, which is pretty good for German vehicles, but it would just be way too stark on something like this. So again, just hitting the highlights. like that. I like it. Okay, so I'm going to continue on with the wheels, get everything all dry brush, do the other side of the hull, and then I'll be ready to move on to work on the tracks a little bit. Also, real quick, like, I'm going to show you something else while I'm doing these wheels. Sometimes you'll have kind of a high point that's hard to work around with a bigger brush. So, it will come out much lighter than the other stuff, which may not be what you want. Maybe what you want, may not. So, all you do, and this is, it took me years to perfect this and learn it, but just go like that. Wipe it off. There you go. High tech. Free lesson. There you go. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is paint these track pads. Before that, I'm going to use the same that I used for the tires, or the rubber part of the wheels, I should say, and use the Mission Models tire black. So what I'm going to do... Put a few drops of that and then a thinner and poly mix to thin it down just a little. Let's see if one drop will do it. That looks pretty good. So let's take a look here. Now, I'm just going to be hitting the, the upper surface of the pad. I'm not going to try and get down the sides because there is going to be washes and dirt applied to that. That way I don't have to worry about getting paint where I don't want it. Now, with the track pads painted, <clears throat> I can actually install this stuff onto the hull. First thing I'm going to do is get the parts for one side. Peel the tape off. Put the wheels in place. Like this. And put the idler in place. And then, when I put the tracks on, I'm going to put them on in conjunction with the drive sprocket. But before I do that, <clears throat> I want to make the inside edge 
Next, these guide horns look as if um, road wheels have been running on them, so I'm just going to sharpen that. Let's see, let's get this. do that to him to make it look like the road wheels have been running on this part of the tracks. I also want to do the same thing to the idler because of the contact. The same thing on the drive sprocket. And here's the way I'm going to do it. <clears throat> uh, the part that's joined together, I want to have facing up because it's going to be behind the skirt, the side skirts. So just going to put that around the idler, pull that tight across there, take the drive sprocket, gauge it into the holes on the tracks like that, and then stretch it up and onto the axle. like that so I twist it to where this kink like this is right here on that wheel so it looks a little more natural so there we go that's that now I'm gonna do the other side and there we go tracks installed both sides all right I have the side skirts ready to go here I've already cleaned them up, cut out the additional little plates here. So now they can be glued in place. And we've got those right there. Those little race bar parts fit in these slots here. These keep it vertical. Just like that. So I think what I will do, I'm going to put a dot of glue on each one of those and then uh, glue in those slots there or along this edge here should work. All right. that and then hopefully get it lined up right the first time like that just like that so I'm gonna let that dry for a sec and then I'll do the other side with both of the sides glued in place, then I can glue these last spaced armor plates in where they go. So we got, oh yeah, just like that. Splendid. 
And for that, since I can reach it, I'm going to use good old to me extra thin. Just like that. Hold in place for a sec, make sure it doesn't pop off. And then do the other side. second and then there all right so that is that so with those parts put in place um, this part right here that fits here I am NOT going to put in place yet that's gonna be one of the last things I do because I want to be able to paint that without having to worry about this being in the way so what I am gonna do is I'm gonna put this like this so I can paint it all right so with all that I can now shoot primer on this whole thing so I'm going to get my primer ready and start spraying okay so now this is ready to paint so I've got some uh, mission models NATO green and some of my mission models magical thinner solution mixed up so I can start painting this thing so I'm going to use, since I'm doing this as a whole base color, I'm going to use my PS290, the one I used for the, uh, um, what do you call that stuff? Primer. To paint this thing. So, let us begin. Okay, so let's do some small stuff first. I'm going to layer it up, so I'm going to... I don't want to puddle it up or anything, so I'm going to layer it up a bit at a time. And this part here, I'm actually going to have to spray top and bottom, so I need to spray this one early on. cap on for make a mess All right, so the um, green is laid down, so I can now take the tape off, put the running gear back on, and um, then put the side skirts back on. Because I want to paint the side skirts in situ for doing the camouflage. So let us do this first. So I've got to get this stuff prepped and make sure. Yeah, I'm gonna have to spray some more. Well, what I can do is I can put the, the gear on here and I'm gonna have to 
I didn't realize this. So much of that showed on the back side, so I'm gonna have to paint that. All right, <clears throat> so I've got my primer mixed up. So I gotta spray along the inside edge of this. Then I'm gonna go ahead and spray all these parts and my commander figure. So let's get cracking. All right, I got the inside edges of the side skirts painted, put the running gear back on, side skirts in place. Now, after some consideration, I have decided to go ahead and install all the tools and all that kind of stuff um, and just paint them on the vehicle. Reason being is, you know, there's clamps and stuff. Uh, these ammo boxes go on the back of the turret and these ammo boxes are in uh like box you know boxes storage boxes on the side so i need to make sure that all of those fittings that are holding these various tools and ammo boxes and stuff onto the vehicle are painted the appropriate camouflage color for instance you know part of this will be green back here part of it will be black so i need to make sure that the ammo boxes that are glued in place there um, that the ammo box holder is the appropriate color if that makes sense it'll become more apparent once i get going so i need to turn back in my instructions and figure out what parts go where all right i'm going to start with this part here whatever it might be uh, it goes there and it's got three pins that have to match up like <clears throat> So let's see if I can get it to try and do this without getting my noggin in the way. There we go. There we go. Okay. So I need to put a little bit of cement in those holes. place without smearing glue all over the place oh there we go now there's a little bit of cement in there you can see it's kind of shiny once so i throw some dull coat in there maybe camouflage over that so that'll take care of that shininess so then I just discovered I got some more ammo cans to paint. But those are okay because those are just resting on the side. They're not, uh, I don't think they're in holders, so they'll be okay. I can do those separately. No big deal. Um, the spare track I am going to leave off because that's entirely one color. So let's see. Then I've got B39, which is the pick head and that goes right there like that A little 
Let's zoom in on here. Hope I can get it on there without smearing glue all over tarnation. There we go. Like that. Then, uh, let's see. I need... I'm not going to need ammo cans yet, so B24, which is this part here. And it goes way down there. So this one, I'm going to do this one off camera because I don't want to get my head in the way. All right, there it is. Went together fine. <clears throat> Just kind of hard to do it <clears throat> on camera. So we got that. Then I need to... E10 goes here, which is this big long thing. And... <clears throat> One thing to note, these parts are all body colored parts, so no big thing there. I don't have to worry about detail painting some of this stuff. There we go. So we got that. So that takes care of those loose parts. So then I also need, there's another spare track that goes up front that I'm going to leave off for now until I, because I'm going to, I'm going to paint that separately. Um, then we have B36, which is this tripod type. Well, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like a tripod, which is weird. I don't know. They still use those in the uh, modern times. But that goes there like that. Just as a quick side note, this is no modern to me a kit. However, it is a very good kit. As you've seen throughout this build, I haven't had any trouble with um, fit or anything like that. Everything's gone together really well. So just because a kit is old doesn't automatically make it a bad kit. All right, so this part here, this is the one I was kind of contemplating whether I needed to do it. Um, before or after putting that part on and it can go on just like that so then put some cement I'm going to have to weight this down a little bit because it's kind of a springy fit so what I'm going to do that then I'm going to get something uh, to set on top of that to make sure it stays down and then the shovel <clears throat> goes atop this part here something like that
So that goes there. And then, uh, let's see what else we got. All right, so we need to flip this around. So then the tanker bar, or whatever it's called, it goes here. there then <clears throat> we've got all of the rest of these here tools so we've got the pick handle goes here should plan this better and glued this stuff on from the get-go but <clears throat> sometimes I sometimes I glue parts like that or paint like that you know with the parts in place and other times I don't so yeah hindsight's 2020 as they say who they are, I don't know, but they say it. And then the axe. This is going to be somewhat obscured because of um, the turret basket. But it'll still be there. This thing here, which is, I have no idea what, looks like tent poles or something. That's going to go here. Yeah, that's it. That's it for the hole. Um, except for those ammo boxes. But again, I can do those separately. So let's move on to the turret. And these just fit like that. So I'm gonna, I'll glue one and then I'll glue, since they're all the same thing, I'll glue the rest off, uh, off camera. There ain't no sense in watching that over and over again. Like that it voila that is that so now i need to let all this stuff dry really well and then i can uh start working on the camouflage and since this stuff has to dry up for a little bit and i'm getting on in time here with the old video i think i'm gonna call it right here on this video which is part six and uh, 
when we come back for part seven, I can actually start on the camouflage colors, which is NATO black and NATO brown. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, comments, hints, tips, concerns, any of that kind of stuff, just put them in the comments section down below and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. And I will see you all later.